Hi, friends. Max Elhaj here. On this episode of the Corpus Animus podcast, we have training think tank athlete Jake Berman on the show. At the time of this recording, he is currently ranked 53rd in the world in the Open. In this episode, we talk about the event in his middle school that got him expelled from school, which led him into CrossFit at a super early age. We talk about the training environment, training with Travis and Noah, and we talk about a whole lot of other things that I really can't remember right now. But listen up, have fun. Before we get into it, make sure you hit that subscribe button because we're on our road to 35K subscribers. And when we hit that milestone, we're going to give away a Black Zinc Rogue 2.0 barbell. Leave a comment below. Leave a comment below. Leave a comment below. That comment is what's going to enter you into the giveaway. Once we reach that 35,000 subscriber milestone, we'll use a random YouTube comment generator on one of these videos where we promoted the giveaway to draw a worldwide winner for that bar. So all you got to do is be subscribed and comment below to enter. Train along some of the best athletes in the world at the sport of CrossFit. To get a free sample week of our current training cycle, head over to trainingthinktank.com slash DSGN. Dude, yeah. I've never noticed that. I've watched a lot of the podcasts. I've never noticed it. Yeah, he's been octopus. there. He's been there. All right, we're rolling. Good old Goldie. Goldie. That's a better name than Larry. Let's start with the open. How'd today go? Um, get right up on that mic, sir. You gotta Sorry, be this like, is this is my real. first one, so yeah. <laughs> go easy on me. <laughs> this um, is your first podcast of all time, like the internet's in my, being introduced in, to Jake Berman right now. Yeah, in my 24 years. Don't fuck this it is up. the first one. Actually, that's negative. Crush it. How about that? Yeah, I like that. Crush it. Let's change that narrative. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, today, so I redid the uh, 21.3 and 4, and I was going for the world record on the, on the Metcon portion, definitely not the lift portion. Yeah. Um, and I was on pace. I did. What so was my your, plan, what was your target bait? Like, well, I knew, so like the, the guys I was worried about had like already posted like Vellner, um, Colton, I thought would have a really yeah. good score. I you mean, did, he did it with but, Noah. And then I knew what no, I knew Noah would be somewhere in that seven fifty to seven forty range. So I was like, just go seven thirty something. That should be safe. Um, granted there might be some outlier yeah, out yeah. there, but so that was my goal. And I said, and I knew if I did 12, 10, eight, I would get that. And I did 12, 10. <laughs> and then what? And then I did not do a set of eight <laughs> and I hit the old wall. I did four and then four singles, four singles. Yeah. But they were like quick. Yeah. yeah it, but it, you must have I been on, I, on pace then. Yeah. So you it's like, were. I did singles because it felt like if I were to cycle into a second one, I would fly off the bar. Oh, okay. So, but it was quick. Like I did three singles on Friday. And it was like, do one, hop right back up. Like not even chalk or anything. Yeah. So it sounds like four yeah, singles, yeah. but it was like. It's one. almost the same speed as doing a set of four because you're just exactly. dropping down exactly. and just exactly. avoiding the eccentric of catching yourself with your hands. Yep. All right. So, and then I was like looking at the clock between every rep and I was just watching it tick up <laughs> and up. I knew I had to like probably go grab the bar at like what? 715. Yeah. And so, and I saw where I was after the last one and I knew I wasn't going to be in the 740 range, no matter how fast I would thrust her. Yeah. Ended up with 754, which uh, beat Noah's score from Friday, which would have been cool if I went head to head with him and beat him. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but he redid it. And then, yeah. And Kyle actually texted me. Oh, I know that was after. No, I think it was before. Yeah. He texted me before. So I already knew he got 744. Oh, you had already known right before I did the workout. Oh, Cause okay. I was like about to put my phone on airplane mode and start filming. And Kyle said 744. I knew, mm. it, was, I knew it wasn't Travis. No offense to Travis. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he just said 744. So, and I saw Vellner had 747. 745, I think. 45, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Somewhere in that range. So how do you feel about the um, open? Um, it was, it didn't feel too different this year. Like effort wise. I feel like I still gave everything I had each workout. Um, and then sitting like seventh, Going into the final week, I said, okay, you know, top five would be really cool, even though it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they did like payouts through fifth. So um, I think that kind of like, I don't know, made me want to go for it on three and four. But with the max lift, I knew that was going to give me hundreds of points. Yeah. Um, so the top five wasn't attainable. So then I said, let's get a world win on the Metcon portion. I've always wanted to do that. I've done every open yeah, yeah. ever. Yeah. They, since you started, started your so. first open in 2011. Yeah. I've done you every were open. And seven I, years old. 
<laughs> eight. <laughs> no. Um, and I've been, ever, since like 2017, there's always been one. I've been like top 10 in the world. Yeah. And I've always like redid to try and get the world win. And I've been top five. I, I think I've gotten like a third. So it's like always been like a goal to yeah. win the world in the open workout. And I thought this was the perfect opportunity. Mm. And you got, you were I close. Failed. It's going to be pretty good. Yeah. You got to change that narrative, man. I do. <laughs> I really, I thought, so I thought on a uh, point two, that was going to be the one and I got sick. Mm. And I think if I would have redone it, I could have been close to that sub nine. Yeah. Hold on. But, let's talk about that. So you got sick. I heard that you were sick, so you didn't come in. And then I heard that night, even though you were still sick, you still did the workout. What was the logic there? I got sick Wednesday night or Thursday morning and we rest on Thursday. And I was like, maybe it's allergies. I don't know. I feel better in the morning. So I just like drank Pedialyte all day. I ate like shit. I ate like Zaxby's because I wasn't craving anything like healthy. Yeah. I just needed to get food in me. So I wasn't even fueling properly. And I just kind of like slept on and off all day. Woke up Friday feeling a little better, but had no desire to go hurt in the gym. And, but like, you know, when the workout comes out, I'm sure you've known from years prior, just like you're antsy the whole day thinking about the workout running it through your head, yeah. you know, palms are sweating. Um, I had that feeling all day. And, you know, when you wake up in the morning, you feel like the worst, like throughout the night. And as the day went on, I started to feel a little better, a little better, but I was still super congested, but I had so much anxiety that I had to just go do it just to get it out. Just to, yeah. Get one attempt in. And I just took a bunch of pre-workout and went at it. I went at like 9 p.m. Friday. TTUT was closed, yeah, obviously. Yeah. Um, I have a good relationship with CrossFit Perimeter. That's where I've trained most yeah. of my life. And my dad uh, met me there. And the owner of the gym, Dave Flynn, um, he judged me and then uh, knocked it out. Cool. And I went pretty conservative. Um, you know, I didn't like fall to the ground after anything. I really thought I was going to feel a lot worse during it, but... Ended up sub 10, which was, I shaved off like over a minute on my previous score and walked away feeling pretty good. But my back and legs were way too sore to redo on Monday. Mm. But, you know, it yeah. doesn't matter. So where do you, do you think you'll finish top 10 in the world this year when the scores are all no, said and I'm done? Already, I already submitted and it's eighth. Oh, okay. And I have like 400 and something points on the clean and jerk. Okay. So you'll yeah. fall a little bit, but you'll still be in a pretty good position after the open. I'll be top 10%. All right. So yeah. I don't want to fast forward forward through the season. I want to go back to the story of your origin as a CrossFitter. Cause I feel like you're starting the, the, this new generation of people. Who's like your sport has been CrossFit. Right, that's, from, like, that's like my background. Yeah. That's yeah. your background. And I find that kind of interesting. I want to know like how you got into CrossFit so young and when you switched from the mindset of, I mean, I don't know what was your mindset starting that young. Was your dad just like, well, Hey, there's this exercise. Let's do it. Yeah. I mean, pretty much. Cause like it wasn't like, I didn't know it was a sport yet. No one really knew what it was yeah. yet. So like in my mind, when I first started, it was more, I thought it was like military training. Yeah. That's what I thought. Cause there wasn't a crossroad on every corner yet. This is 2010. Yeah. Roughly. I think I was 12 or 13. Yeah. So you started uh, my, CrossFit close to the same amount, same time as me, Yeah. So. except I was a lot older. How old were you? Well, were you probably like age? 23 now. Yeah. Oh, 23 cool. or 24. Nice. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was my dad's girlfriend at the time. She, uh, I think one of her friends was like a, a CrossFit coach at one of the only CrossFit gyms in Atlanta at the time it was CrossFit East Cobb. And I was, go I was going into eighth grade and this was like a summer before and I yeah. was switching schools. I was going to do like, you know, their football program and then go into their feeder high school team the next year. And I was already like trying to like get bigger, faster, stronger for like thinking about high school. Yeah. And they had just started going to this CrossFit gym and they're like, Hey, like you should come with us for a class. You'd like it. Um, and the way they explained it was just like circuit training. Yeah. And I did a class and I fucking loved it. Like it was like, I know like no one my age was doing anything like this. Yeah. No, I mean, not a lot of people were even training like this. It yeah. Was for so sure. new. Yeah. Um, and then I did it pretty consistently that summer, but you know, I was doing like banded pull-ups, kettlebell swings with 25 pounds. Like yeah. it was so basic, but yeah. it was like the coolest thing ever. And at the time I was like kind of into them. Um, I thought I'd maybe go in the military one day and it was very, the gym was very military-esque. The guy who ran it, Jason, he was like a army ranger, green beret, something like that. So, you know, we were doing like stretcher carries and like yeah, yeah. a lot of weight vest stuff. That was like the culture. But, I feel like in the early yeah. days, that was almost Law all the early adopters were, the, were people with that type of a background. Yeah. So the, this is actually gets pretty crazy because, so I can, you know, go into like school starts, I do football, so I'm not doing much CrossFit yet. 
And I ended up getting expelled from the school. From school? In like that November. Yeah. Is this a story that we could tell on the air? Yeah. Okay. I mean, Why'd you get expelled? <laughs> um, so it was, so like, I guess like being a kid and like hanging out with my friends on the weekends and stuff, I was walking everywhere and I was living in Dunwoody and I had just like a bunch of stuff in my bag and I had a, like a, stuff? A, like, a, like I had like a knife. No, <laughs> oh, not drugs. Okay. I had a pocket knife for like protection or just, you know, yeah, walking yeah. around with my friends. Uh, just do, <laughs> no, just like <laughs> doing, around like, and stab my friends. <laughs> doing like normal middle school things. Yeah, yeah I got it. Um, <laughs> And I used this bag for school too. And, um, I guess like I, I didn't really, it didn't really register to me. Like I kept all these things in my bag and I would bring that same bag to school. And I was sitting at like a table like this in class it was the science, science table, the big black tables yeah. and their bags would With go the, like, underneath. The Bunsen burners yeah, that you put on top. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, um, the kid across from me was going through my bag under the table looking to steal something. And the same kid had been like suspended, like I think a couple weeks before. Oh, huh. Um, and he finds this knife and I had no idea I was doing my work. Yeah. Like a good student. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> finds a knife. He, uh, he gets caught with it later in the day. And then the principal or the vice principal and administrators come and grab me from class. They grab my bag. They say, follow me, go to the office. They show me a picture of the knife. It was like a switchblade stiletto. It was like, yeah. um, they're saying, is this your knife? And I was like, yeah. Now, I had no idea like it was like that big of a deal, but to there have was a like a zero tolerance policy in sc on school grounds to bring a weapon. Right. So, yeah. So they're like, since you brought this knife to school, like we have to arrest you. And they put me in the cop car with the same kid who stole the knife. And we both go to DeKalb Memorial jail. No way. Yeah. And I was like 13. And it was crazy because the school school had just gotten let out and they walk us in front of all the carpool lines, all the bus lines and everything. So everyone sees us handcuffed getting yeah. stuffed in this car. That was like the scarlet letter, man. Dude. Did you yeah. McLovin? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I wish I would have played it off like way cooler, but I was like scared out of my yeah. mind. So hold on. I was going to jail. Yeah. But, and before that, were you like a good kid? Like you, you said you did your work. First like, time offender. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like you were, yeah. you were yeah. by the book kind of person. I mean, I wasn't the best student. Yeah, I wasn't a, like a great, well-behaved kid, but like <laughs> I shouldn't have been arrested. Okay. All right. So you went to Anyways, jail. So I go to jail. My dad picks me up in the middle of the night at some, at some point. He didn't talk to me for like the rest of the night. He was like, upset. Yeah. I mean, yeah. He didn't know like the full story. He eventually like took my side and was like, yeah, you, I mean, this is bullshit. You shouldn't yeah. have been expelled. Yeah. But well, so we tried to appeal it. So they're like, you're suspended until a school hearing and then we'll decide if you're expelled or not. They decided to expel me and we're like, what the fuck? Like I didn't bring this yeah. knife on purpose. <laughs> yeah. I admitted to even bring it. I could have just said it wasn't mine and I probably would have been fine, but yeah, yeah. I was so naive. Um, so then they, we tried to appeal it. It took another like month and then we appealed to like the, the cab board or whatever and they denied it. So they're like, you're expelled. So I had to go to what's called an alternative school for the rest of my middle school. Yeah. So it was just was one like semester. half my friends in high school. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. It's like where you go when you, no you other schools will let you in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So the one I went to is actually called Crossroads Second Chance North, and it was up near here. It was in Roswell. Oh, cool. But I lived in Dunwoody. The closest bus stop was in Sandy Springs. The corner Sandy of, Springs from here? Yeah. The oh. closest bus stop to where I lived. Oh, okay. So it was off the corner of Abernathy and Roswell Road, if you know where that is. Yeah, I know Roswell Road. Like how far down? Well, whatever. Yeah. So- it was in the shopping center. There was like a public subway Starbucks and then a CrossFit gym. One of the only CrossFit gyms in Atlanta at the time. Like it was like fate. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I would go to school and like alternative schools don't have like extracurricular activities. You don't have like PE or art yeah. class or anything. So you get out of school at like 1 PM versus like 4 PM. Yeah. Whatever for regular school. So I get drop, dropped back off into this shopping center and both my parents worked. Um, so I would be just stuck in the shopping center for the rest of the day. And I would just go to, I started going to this CrossFit gym in that shopping center and I would just like train and like fuck around in the gym until I got picked up. And that's, I feel like when I just started to like to really develop a passion for it. Cause that's like all I had at yeah. the time. Like I wasn't hanging out with my friends too much after I'd gotten expelled. I think a lot of parents didn't want me like, that was what I was saying, like kids. scarlet letter. Like you yeah. turned into the bad kid from right. one stupid little experience. And like I feel that. like alternative school made me worse. Like I was just around the worst kids. Yeah. Um, I thought it was cool at the time. So to be bad. 
I mean, like, yeah, like yeah. kids were doing drugs and stuff, like smoking weed, yeah. whatever, which isn't a big deal anymore. But yeah. like, you know, in eighth grade, like I know, and they grouped us in with the high school too. So I was like the youngest one there. Mm. So it was just like a lot you of bad groomed. influence. Right. Yeah. So I, I feel like this kind of kept me out of trouble and like kept me focused. And I started to develop a passion for CrossFit, just being stuck at this gym for the rest of the day. Yeah. To where I started going before school. Like I would ask my mom to drop me off early and they had showers there. So I would like do the morning do, class. Yeah. yeah. And I was doing like classes and stuff. And yeah. then um, when I come back, I would just like work on like pull ups, like work on muscle ups and work on my lifting. Um, and I did that for the rest of the year. And I think that's what I don't know, molded me into like the CrossFit yeah, or the passion I have in CrossFit that I have now. So back then you were, you started in two, around 2010 and then you just did the open like that. Yeah. So the, yeah, that, so that, I guess that year was, was the two, first year they rolled out 2011, the open. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Cause they so, did sectionals before that yeah. I think in 2010. Oh wait, maybe. Yeah. Cause I remember watching the sectionals. So maybe this was another year after then okay. that was when the open was. Yeah, yeah. So this could have been like 2009, 2010. Okay. Um, or no, because I graduated high school in 2014, sort of in 2010, going into my freshman year. Okay. Um, yeah, I did the first open. But like that's, I feel like that year was when like it started to like become a sport. Yeah. So. So at that age when you were learning, what were like, how was it, how were you instructed? I've never really worked with people. I know we have coaches that have worked with younger athletes, but I've never worked with athletes that young in their developmental mm -hmm. phase. What was it just like? you pick things up pretty quickly or they started with you super remedial. Like how'd they, how'd they communicate to you? And I mean, your I was parents have to like, be there. No, no. I mean, they weren't like, I started, I would do classes with my dad, but he didn't, you know, get off work until like five. So yeah, yeah. I was there for hours and there was like a subway next door. I would go eat, come back to the gym. Um, but I was kind of thrown into the fire. I mean, it, it's, I don't know. I feel like the foundations class aren't what they are now. Yeah. Um, so it was all about just like working until I got RX workouts. Yeah. And then when I started RXing workouts, it was like, all right, I want to win the class. Um, and then and beat my dad. So this was, my dad was kicking my ass. And then, <laughs> you That's know, what a year happens, goes by yeah. and then I started to beat him yeah. and it you was get dope. stronger and right. Yeah. yeah. I'm also like growing and developing. Yeah. And, um, yeah. So this was CrossFit perimeter. This is where I actually just did the, open the workout. workout. Yeah. yeah. So. They, they moved across the street though, but same like area, same gym. Mm -hmm. So you didn't get high school sports because you were, no, I, did, I did. So I only had to do alternative school to the end of eighth grade. And then I went back to public school. Oh, okay. So did you play sports so in high school? That's the thing. So then I, you know, I picked back up football. I'd played football like my whole life. My dad was my coach for most of my life. And then I, I played football freshman year and then I moved high schools and then I quit that next season to, to, pursue CrossFit. You knew at in 10th grade, you were like, I want to be an athlete. Well, Cause this. then I was like, yeah, I want to, I want to make regionals. That was like the goal oh. because like, I felt like football was so prone to injury and I kept getting hurt and it would like affect my CrossFit mm. and I didn't want to risk that. So I quit football. I kind of fallen out of love with it and developed this new love for CrossFit. Yeah. And as I was getting better and better, um, I just saw like the potential for where I could be. And I thought by that, and that, moment I thought like I'll be at the games from 17. Mm. It was like 14. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm 24. I, mean, I haven't made it yet, but besides the you're point, only 10 but, years off maybe. Yeah. Um, well the thing is like, like everyone that I'm trying to beat, they're getting better too. Yeah. So I have to not only like get to where they are, but you got to get better I gotta, faster. I got to improve faster. Yeah. yeah. So you're also still pretty young. Yeah. I mean, and they didn't have the teen games or anything back then. Yeah. I think they started that as I turned 18. Yeah. So, so you were already aged up. Yeah. Yeah. So I quit football, started wrestling and wrestling just changed my whole mindset. Like I became a savage. Huh? Like I like wanted the pain. Yeah. I feel like wrestling just like wrestling did the, not do that, that for game me. changer. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, opposite? no, I mean, I think I'm just naturally soft. Okay. <laughs> well, I feel so like I mean, wrestling is like what can help you. Yeah. But I was just kidding. Not. Yeah. <laughs> you just, you still do like jujitsu and stuff, right? Yeah. A little bit. Okay. Yeah. You, you can't be soft for that. I feel like. So. Yeah. I don't think you're I really am. Your, I just, you're not giving yourself enough credit. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> so, so what, what about wrestling? How did that change your mindset? Just, I think it's like the hardest sport for sure. Yeah. And just like it's individual too. So and CrossFit's individual. How did it translate for you for CrossFit? Cause I feel like there were certain aspects of it that helped me and other aspects of it that, were counterproductive to being good. Cause I feel like in wrestling matches are so one-on-one -on -one dependent. So you can almost like 
pick an opponent, watch their tendencies, mm-hmm. figure out how to try to combat that. And you're focusing on another person right. in a race setting that can be good if you're using them to pace money. But if they start getting like, when I started paying attention to athletes that were just more fit than me getting ahead, it almost get demoralized in the middle of the race. Right. So I felt like there was like the comparison aspect of it held me back. Did you find any of that for yourself? Not necessarily. Cause I knew like going in, Cause I didn't start wrestling till my junior year of high school. Oh, okay. So I'd already been cross. I was already like doing regionals. You were already like a good crossfitter yeah, so my, that got tougher from wrestling. Exactly. So yeah. my, my, uh, my engine was just like freakish for my age and at the time and like my strength yeah. for my body weight too. I was wrestling 160. Oh, okay. And I felt like that helped me so much in wrestling going against kids who had been wrestling since they were, since they were like eight. Yeah. Because their technique was so good, but I could just wear on them. Yeah, you could just and manhandle them exactly, and then win like in the snap third downs, period. Snap downs, yeah. snap downs, yeah, and go, yeah. To, go to the third period, and I can potentially win. Um, so CrossFit helped me more in wrestling, I feel like, than wrestling helped me in CrossFit yeah. physically. Yeah. But mentally, I think wrestling helped my mental game in CrossFit, just like the ability to like push past exhaustion and pain and just yeah. being able to suffer and deal with it. Um, cause wrestling's chaotic and yeah. there's a lot going on and same with CrossFit, yeah. especially in like open workouts when I don't, you're, you know, you, you have guys going rep for rep and you want to stick with your pace game Yeah, and you don't want to get sucked into their game. Yeah. And it's the same thing. Yeah. So did you wrestle both years of high school then? Yep. Junior senior. and senior. Yep. Junior and then senior. after that. Yeah, that was go- it. Yeah. I mean, I was going into college. Did you go to college? Yep. Where'd you go? I didn't graduate. But oh, I went okay. to Georgia Southern, okay. which was dope because they had like the nicest CrossFit gym I've ever been to in Statesboro. Really? Yeah. CrossFit Borough. Huh. Um, and then Jacob Anderson was tra- was in oh, college too. Oh yeah, he so, was. Did you train with him? So yeah, we would train together. He was strong. All dude, the Anderson boys are. Yeah, so they went men, to the same now, high school as me in the same area. Oh really? So I had known them. Yeah. Oh cool. And I had trained at CrossFit Paragon in high school, so I had moved from Perimeter to Paragon because it was more of a competitive gym and it was closer to where I lived. Yeah. And I trained with all of them for throughout my high school, and I did regionals on a team with Paragon for two years. So what was your, when did you start taking it from, I'm just doing classes and some of your own, I mean, was that self-guided work? Did you have somebody when yeah. you were just in the gym hanging out, were you just like, so, yeah, I'm going to do a, a thousand pull-ups? Right. <laughs> I had mentors, but like, um, I think at, when I was 14, I reached out to CrossFit North Atlanta, um, seeing if they had a, like a weightlifting coach Yeah, and this guy, Michael Kraft had reached back out to me and he said, I'll work with you. And I actually did some competitive weightlifting for a little bit. Um, I did like youth nationals for a couple of years nice. and then, um, I learned a lot in weightlifting, which carried over so well for me yeah. in CrossFit. So I worked with coaches like that, but I didn't like get a coach coach until, um, I was like 21 already. Yeah. Do you but think went, that held you back? Did you think? 100%. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, you know, I mean, yeah, I think I would have, I also didn't take it as seriously in college. Like I had so many distractions, like, so this is 2015. I went to college and I pledged a fraternity mm. and I just wanted to party all the time. Yeah. I pledged for like 11 weeks. So I wasn't really training. Yeah. And then I got initiated like that November and then the open is in February. So I didn't have much time to prepare. Got it. But I was still training twice a day. I just was, I was just, you know, yeah. going out a lot, drinking a lot, was working at the bars. My sleep schedule wasn't on point. Um, so all the outside factors weren't dialed in, but the training was there. I was, Getting yeah, pretty good you pushed hard, but you yeah. didn't have all the support mm-hmm. stuff around it. Yep. And I went to watch Jacob at regionals, um, in, uh, 2015. And I remember sitting with my buddy. Did he Hamilton. make it that year? He made it. That was the year he didn't make it. He got yeah. like sixth. Yeah. He just like, just barely missed it. Um, and I was sitting with my buddy Hamilton in the stands and we both decided right then and there, like, we we're going to do what it takes, um, to make it to regionals. Like Hamilton. Broadnax. Broadnax. Who yeah. Used to oh, yeah, train yeah, with yeah. That's right. Yeah. Um, cause he was down in Statesboro too. So we had a good crew down yeah, there. Yeah. That's a lot of really good athletes in one spot. Yep. Yeah. So, um, I actually moved home for that year for CrossFit. Yeah. I mean, I didn't do well my freshman year, but yeah, like the goal was like, yeah, you were so, more serious and passionate yeah, about I that. I honestly didn't school. give a fuck about school. Like <laughs> I wanted to make regionals in the yeah. games. So I moved back. I trained CrossFit Paragon again and I was two, three times a day. And, um, just, I was so dialed in yeah. and I made regionals that year. Yeah. And that was the year Jacob Anderson made the games. For okay. Time. So if you could go back, you started getting coached when, what year was that? So I didn't have a coach 
at Paragon, we just had a good training squad. I think we followed like comp train blog or something. Um, so you guys were just on a structure of mm -hmm. training. Yep. But then I went through a series of knee injuries and that held me back from getting strong. So my engine just was through the roof. It was always top tier. Yeah. Could compete with, the, you know, the elite yeah. CrossFitters and then the max lifter, the ladder would come out and it would send me back. Yeah. So, so I honestly would have like a couple made, re I would have made regionals in 2015, um, in college if they didn't do a max that year. The one A. Or like, yeah, like yeah. the clean and jerk. I clean and jerk like 275 and it kept me out of, uh, regionals that year. Yeah. So what were the but, things that you think coaching wise after getting a coach that you were missing out on when you were young, that would have been helpful other than having somebody to tell you like how important yeah. outside life variables were. Right. Yeah. So that was a big thing, but like also still dealing with the knee injuries. Like I had stress fracture in my leg, um, a tracking issue in the other leg. Like I couldn't really squat ever. And if I did, I was like wrapping them twice and like, it was bad. Yeah. Cause I, I basically like my knees were going really far over my toes and it was putting a lot of stress on my knees. And yeah. there's a period where I got really strong in high school and then like couldn't squat for a couple, two to three years. And for I, two or three years, like it was like, I still kind of deal with it. Yeah. Like I, I can't squat. Um, after like a lot of running, like I still feel the stress fracture. Huh. So we're, you know, me and Kyle are working with it, but yeah. Um, but having the coach help me get my legs stronger without having to squat, like all figuring the accessory out, work. Yeah, like I didn't have other tools on how to program for myself accessory wise. Yeah. I thought I just had to squat, squat, but they're like, no, good mornings, box squats, lunges. Like, There's other things you right. can do to keep getting stronger. Right. Yeah. So it actually kind of just opened up my eyes to all the other things I could do. Yeah control. Is that so. the variable? I mean, I know the answer to this. That's the variable of training. That was the hardest for you to develop and is still the thing that as you, you want to keep pushing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you hit 277 in that complex, mm -hmm. which at the speed you did the Metcon is actually pretty close to where the other elites are. So you right. seem to be closing the gap on the strength. Definitely. What other things do you struggle with develop aerobic mental power, wise, just like um, shorter Metcons? Yeah. Uh, just like the machines, like rowing, assault bike, ski. Yeah. Um, I'm, you know, I'm nowhere near Travis on like a max effort row. Yeah. Um, so, and I just, I weigh less too. I'm shorter. So I think that definitely factors in, but, um, I'm definitely getting better as me and Kyle work to get more powerful. Yeah. Um, so that's something I'm closing the gap on as well. So I think it's strength and aerobic power and then there's like the missing pieces. All right. So but, that's your background where, what's your goal now? I mean, you had, had this fiery passion. You've had it for 10 years. Mm -hmm. Now it's been so long. It's like, I can't stop. Like, I got, <laughs> I got the to make passion, it. Yeah. Yeah. The passion's gone now. You got the commitment. Yeah. I mean, the passion's still there. Like <laughs> okay. I want to make the games. I want to get rookie of the year when I make it yeah. um, this year, hopefully. And yeah, it's always been the goal still is. And so. what's your thought process about this structure of this season? So oh, I, stage two, we got. I love it. Yeah. Because like. I was just telling Chris about this, like la or in 2019, when it was all said and done, when they took the top 20 in the open, I got like 38th. But when it was all said and done after the, all the backfills and everything, yeah. I was the next person up. You were one spot out from qualifying yeah. in well, 19? Like, like at the end of the yeah, summer, yeah. once all yeah, the yeah. sanctionals were done, like yeah. I was the next in line, but I'm so glad it didn't happen. Cause like that, I would not get any fulfillment whatsoever. If it was just showing up games for online. Yeah. Like my, like the way I've always dreamed about it is like, at a venue regional setting. Yeah. them calling out my name. I'm on the podium. Like that's how I want to make the games. And now this new structure is giving me the ability to do that again. Yeah. So that's why I love it. That's so interesting to me. Like hearing, I mean, I obviously like me and all the friends that I had were athletes. We had these visions of being professional athletes or accomplishing getting division one scholarships or whatever it was. It's so interesting to me because CrossFit wasn't a thing growing up, but mm -hmm. now it is a thing and it's a sport that people aspire to and your dreams are wrapped around and centered right. on it. It's so interesting seeing that next wave of people coming up that it's like, hold on, wait, what? Like this is the sport that you did growing up. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's going to change the level. Like 100%. I even think like Travis, all the young athletes now that are in the top, that's their sport. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Up in. And you said like, oh, I can't keep up with Travis, but he's 30. And if you continue developing for the next seven years, if even at an incremental progress of like two to 3% a year, if you stayed consistent and right. disciplined, 
the peak level that you could attain is probably higher than what you see right now. Definitely. It's hard to conceptualize that when you're like in the middle of competing it, against it goes them, back but, to what I was saying about the guys I'm trying to get better are getting better too. Yeah. Yeah, for so sure. I got to get better faster. So how do you set targets for like, is it stage two? This is a weird thing. Even as a coach for me is trying to figure out how to communicate. I want all my athletes peaked. And for you, it'd be like peak at semifinals. So you take one of those right. top spots, Have my but, three best days in June. Yes. For sure. But you also can't really sleep on stage two. I mean, you got to execute gotta well, it, yeah. you got to make it. So how have you been balancing that and how you've been balancing the ego in stage one? Cause top 10% really is kind of a joke for you. But yeah, but then it was, it, it became about getting top five and then w winning yeah, the world. Yeah. But just cause it's always been a goal. And then I think top five in the open would be sick. Yeah. But did you're right. You, it doesn't matter. Did you, know? you have a struggle trying to keep that or did the, it wasn't even a struggle. The leaderboard called your name too much. What do you mean? Like, like keeping the, Hey, this doesn't matter with the, I want to be top five. It sounds like I think it, top I five think won that battle. The first workout I think is why it changed. Like at first I was like, yeah, I want to do well, but who gives a fuck? But then after we all had to redo, cause my first score wasn't that great. Yeah. Um, and we all had to but redo you had because the, of the standard. That slide. Yeah. Standard. Like I, I, Kyle texted me Monday. He's like, you need to redo for safety measures. I told him I didn't, I wasn't going to redo it. Oh, okay. And then Noah and everyone was redoing it. Cause I, I want to be one and done. Like who cares? Yeah. Top 10% is like 7,000. Um, and then I ended up getting like a 15th in the world score on my oh, second read on my so redo it sucked you in. I was like seven seconds from Noah. Mm. So then I'm like, okay, well now I, depend, <laughs> there's only two weeks left. Yeah. You know, now you're already on, in it. Right. And then the next workout came out and that's a wheelhouse again. So yeah. then I was sitting seven and you did that one without a repeat, right? Yeah. That was one and done and I was yeah. sick. So, I mean, not, I'm not trying to make excuses, but yeah, for sure. But then I was like, you know, I, this could actually be, I could potentially, you know, depending on what the workout was. I mean, if they didn't do a part two, the max, I would have been top, top three in the world probably on this. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah. If, it, if this was the first week, it would have been different. So what are your, you got any predictions for stage two focus intentions, anything? Just be close to Noah and Travis. Yeah. And I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> You'll be in a good spot. It. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you think? It's going to be so helpful. Like, being with Noah, Travis, KB, like, yeah, just to know like what good scores are and just to have them to push. Yeah, for sure. Um, and to bounce ideas off of like how to pace workouts. And I don't know, cause there's obviously going to be workouts that favor each of us. Yeah. More, what have know. you seen this pod? They, they might not even listen to this, but like things that you've learned from watching Trav, Noah training with them, things that you see you do better. Do you think it's been like, there's been a learning process that's not just about working harder from being around them. Yeah. I mean, I think their lifestyle pieces are way more dialed in than me, but at the same time, like they seem so much more professional at their approach, which I've been working on, which we've talked about. Yeah. Um, even, you know, when they get to the gym before an open workout, you know, they go straight to their warm up and have their plan, have their splits, you know, typed out, you know, everything. Um, and I think, that approach has been rubbing off on me. Like I'm trying, I'm working on being more professional, even when I approach just regular training days. Yeah. You, uh, uh you mentioned something a couple of weeks ago, or maybe it was last week that you showed up five minutes before some competitive workout back in the day and perform really well on it. Oh, uh, when we did. So when we were all training for the sanctionals last year, right before COVID. Yeah. Yeah. So we, uh, we did Tommy V me, Travis and KB. Yeah. And I was just, this was, I was still living at my dad's in Dunway. I wasn't like a mile away like I yeah. am now, but I think I hit like bad traffic or whatever. And I get to, we planned on like a three thirty start time. I get there like three twenty five. <laughs> That's pretty standard. I walk in, all the barbells are like right when you walk in. So I grab my barbell and I, and they're on the other side of the gym. I literally grab my barbell on my way in and walk over to where they are. And I put my bar in my lane, put the 50 or put the 35s on yeah. and we hit Tommy V and I did pretty well. I think I had a huge PR in <laughs> yeah. my Tommy V score. I was like right behind Travis. Who's yeah. really good. So uh, you had no, no warm up whatsoever. I probably did like three thrusters, mm. but very impressive. No breath holds. Yeah. <laughs> Is that part of your normal warm up now? Now I do breath holds. Yeah. yeah. What if, out. what have your, yeah. <laughs> what's been your, uh, like the biggest evolution of you now versus like say three or five years ago when you were on the, I guess, that'd be like the regional circuit. Yeah. You think you're better than you are then oh, you're better now than you were then mentally or physically both. Absolutely. What's the biggest, Everything. what are the biggest changes? I'm way stronger. Um, I think, uh, 
I, my Mekon's way better. Like my engine's way better. Everything's just better. Like my rowing's better. My salt biking's better. All the machines, all the ergs, like everything we've been working on, like, is like, I'm getting better. Yeah. And I'm closing the gap. Like we said, so, yeah. um, and just in this environment, I've been in environments similar. Like I, I, I was training at OPEX. So yeah. I know, you know, I know the vibe. Yeah. Um, but I think this environment helps so much because in 2019, I trained alone for another year when I came back from OPEX. Yeah. So what is the, what's the biggest difference in being in an environment for you? Well, I mean like sp training with Travis and Noah, who guys I've looked up to for years and watching the games, like that's awesome. Yeah. And that fires me up to get to the gym and train with them every day. Yeah. And get as close as I can to beating them. And when I beat them, I get a lot of confidence. Yeah. yeah. We and, talked about that. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like that just builds momentum Yeah, and they go hand in hand. So I just try and stick with that and try and keep up with them on the big weights. I that aren't that it's not a split jerk. Yeah. <laughs> Cause you're why? Cause you're, you're better than them already yeah. at that. If anyone who's programming uh, <laughs> semifinals is listening, please program a max. Would you, jerk. would you be willing to bribe them? I'm <laughs> then now then morally I, I don't know if it comes out I'm gonna I'm cry tears of happiness because every year it's like a joke like the max yeah, jerk it's is coming, coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah and it never does I mean they got a rack in there so that but even like at the chance. games they did yeah you're right yeah and but Dubai rather, they did it right I'd rather they have done it for yeah but in the games they had a shoulder heavy shoulder overhead like I mean any kind of heavy shoulder overhead oh but any like, format yeah, like a shoulder over a ladder would be cool. We've done a yeah. throw down and I did really well in that. Yeah. So they did a shoulder over a ladder at the games too, right? That oh, was did? the year I think Noah walked. I don't, I mean, I guess they called it a power clean and jerk ladder, but it essentially is just a shoulder True. overhead ladder. But I'm talking for most like people. they bring out the blocks or the. Or oh, rack. oh, and you're running and up into the blocks and jerking it from the blocks. Yeah, or something like that. Running under the bar. But I'd much rather have a, a max jerk at the semifinal than the quarterfinals. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. But I could see an overhead squat. Out of the rack, three rep max, five rep max, one rep max. Yeah. Hopefully they don't do a max front squat. <laughs> you right. can't tell everyone, man. You can't yeah. give away your or secrets. Maybe this is, <laughs> yeah, this is for psychology. Begging, yeah. it, begging for give it. Me the front squat. Yeah. Dave Castro's watching this. He's yeah. like Jake Berman. It's only for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just out of everyone in the world. Yeah, for sure. He's definitely he tuning has no into idea this who podcast. I am. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Chris, what kind of questions you got from the peanut gallery? Chris with a good movie recommendation. Good movie recommendation. Well, I told you to watch Good Time like over and over again for the past two weeks. Good That's Time? Like, good Time. It's uh, Softy Brothers. Um, they did Uncut Gems. Oh, Uncut Gems with yeah. uh, Adam, Adam Sandler. Sandler? Yeah, that was yeah. an interesting movie. Yeah. It, it was hit or miss for a lot of people. Yeah. I loved it. I thought yeah. it was a masterpiece, but um, Good Time was the movie they did before and okay. has Robert Pattinson in it. Very, very good. Is that the guy from uh, Twilight? Twilight. Yep. Um, you called that up really quick. Like you were reading my mind. Are you a Twilight fan? No, I'm not. But that's what everyone says when I recommend this movie. They're like, oh, he was in and I'm like, Twilight. Twilight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's so, a Twilight guy. Yeah. All right. What else? Uh, uh, hit us with uh, where to follow you, Mixer, what, what you got going yeah, on? Yeah. Plug all your stuff, man. Yeah. I should have brought that. I thought about it. You should have to, for us to drink to drink together. Yeah. Kind of like Joe Rogan. He, he drinks the kill cliff on the podcast. Now he drinks kill cliff. He, well, Is he, he sponsored by them now? I, I think he like in, invested. invested. He, oh, has his okay. own, he has his own line out. Like a, it's like a CBD kill cliff drink. Huh? Yeah. And he has it through and they, he drinks it on every podcast now. Oh, I haven't tried it him. yet, but yeah, it's cool. Man. Good for kill cliff. Yeah. Do you want to give me a mix? Do you want to have a max mixer line? we we'll call it the M and M. <laughs> you, you thought of that already there's no way you just came up with that on the fly I did, I did. what's up website yeah mixerbeverages.com so for our listeners yeah get, tell my, us what mixer is this, this is, is my your... beverage company that I launched um, back in October with it's specially engineered with natural and, ingredients uh, and a bowl um, yeah so it's a zero calorie zero sugar non-alcoholic cocktail mixer and chaser um you know, it's, like, it's infused with electrolytes. So it'll help hydrate you while you drink. Um, it's basically, it's essentially just like a healthy alternative to like Coca-Cola and Sprite. So we have a citrus flavor and a cola flavor. So and you, people can drink it not as a mixer, but the name indicates right. that it should also be used as a mixer. Exactly. So well, every, all the sodas out there are sodas, but they're inadvertently used as mixers. Whereas yeah. ours is like the first healthy soda that's specifically designed to be used as a mixer. It can be inadvertently used as a healthy soda. 
Got it. So, so like for, for you, you would just drink it with dinner or something if you're craving a soda, but you want you know, you want to be healthy. Yeah. What, what if for people out there that are drinking alcohol, what's the best use of mixer? Um, what's your so favorite mixer mix? Tequila is probably. I mean, tequila is paleo. A lot of our listeners are tequila and close citrus to one. So tequila and citrus. Yeah. So the citrus we made to go with all the light liquors like tequila, vodka, gin, um, and then. The colas for the darker liquors, um, bourbon, whiskey, um, rum. So, you know, we tried to, I guess, be as broad as we could with the two first flavors, and then we'll go into more niche flavors like a like a berry or something like that. Look at you. Yeah. So. Not only an aspiring games athlete, an entrepreneur. <laughs> what else? Just that's, 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 that's it. Plenty. What's your Instagram? And Instagram, uh, Jake Berman forty four. Hi, brother. Thanks for coming. Oh. <laughs> Thanks for having me.